Welcome lovers to a fascinating journey into the mysterious disappearance of hip-hop phenomenon Petty Pablo. In the fast-paced world of hip-hop, where legends rise and fall, the mystery surrounding Petty Pablo's sudden disappearance has left fans and industry insiders confused. As a seasoned journalism professional, I delve into the shadows to uncover the truth behind the headlines, peeling back the layers of secrecy to reveal the untold story of what really happened with Petty Pablo. All the details you need are right in this video. Let's dive in now. Moses Barrett III, known to the world as Petty Pablo, emerged on July 22, 1973, in the vibrant city of Greenville, North Carolina. Raised to the sound of gospel hymns, his mother affectionately called him Petty, inspired by the iconic Little Rascals character. Despite his deep roots in music, Petty has faced a challenging journey, marked by a lack of support and the burden of financial responsibilities from a young age. Petey's upbringing was characterized by a lack of encouragement from those around him. Despite his family's urging to explore his musical talent, he often heard discouraging comments, such as, he'll never become anything he's a child, bad child, the shadow of a weak person covered his life, making people look at him with shame. At the age of 13, driven by a sense of responsibility, Petty made the bold decision to leave home to help my mother financially. Petey's life took a transformative turn during his junior year of high school when he was introduced to the world of rap music. Feeling deeply connected to the art form, he made the difficult choice to drop out of school. In Petey's words, he felt like he was wasting a life filled with potential, and music became the catalyst that helped him reveal his hidden talent. The adversity he faced fueled his determination and he began to carve a path for himself in the competitive field of the music industry. Tragedy strikes when Petty loses his best friend Pablo. To express his sincere gratitude, he adopted the nickname Petty Pablo. Vowing to preserve his friend's memory through his art, he was actually one of my very good friends but is no longer with us, and I said, as long as I'm alive, you know, I'll keep his name alive. So, when you say my name, you say my man, at the same time naming, Petty expressed. This pledge became not only an homage to his friend but also a testament to his resilience and loyalty. Early in his career, Petty faced a significant obstacle that could have derailed his dreams. When he was just 20 years old, in September 1993, he was convicted of armed robbery, leading to nearly five years in prison. However, adversity does not define Petey's story. After his release in June 1998, he set his sights on a new chapter in New York City, where he would forge relationships with influential figures in rap music, including Black Rob and Busta Rhymes. Petey's breakthrough moment came when he landed a spot on the extended remix of Black Rob's, Whoa. His lyrical abilities have attracted the attention of many in the industry. In an interview with Ice Cream Combos, Petty recounted an important night at a nightclub. He temporarily lost his friends but happened to meet them again in an unexpected place, the bathroom. Black Rob encourages him to show off his talents, urging him to just kill something. Little did Petty know that this impromptu performance would change his life. As fate would have it, Dave Lighty, then A&R for Jive Records, walked into the bathroom during Petey's spontaneous rap session. Lighty is immediately attracted to Petey's natural talent, which leads to a life-changing opportunity. Jive Records has renewed Petey's contract, marking the beginning of a promising career. Petty Pablo emerged as a notable figure through his collaborative efforts with fellow artists such as Mystical and Sticky Fingers. However, it was his collaboration with Timbaland that set the stage for his debut album, a journey that unfolded in a rather unique way. During a trip from New York to Washington, D.C., Timbaland gave Petty a guitar that would later become the foundation for an important part of his musical journey. Playing music continuously throughout the journey, Petty experiences a sudden burst of creativity. He told Billboard that it felt as if a helicopter was following him and the lyrics came to life with ease. Initially, Jive Records expressed skepticism about the song. They argued that, nobody knows where North Carolina is you'll have to do something else. Undeterred, Petty Pablo was adamant in his desire to create a song that would make his fellow North Carolinians proud. Timbaland, a natural talent, joined the University of North Carolina Tar Heels marching band to help create the catchy tune that created the now-famous national anthem, Raise Up. Released in the summer of 2001, Raise Up not only paid homage to North Carolina but also attracted national attention, peaking at number 9 on the Billboard R&B chart. 
The single's success paved the way for Petty Pablo's debut album, Diary of a Sinner, first entry, which hit shelves in November 2001. Impressively, it debuted at number 13 and surpassed the 100,000 mark version in the first week. By December, the album had achieved gold certification. Petty Pablo's remarkable journey reached another peak when his album earned a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Album, a prestigious acknowledgement of his influence in the music industry. Although he faced stiff competition and ultimately lost to Eminem, the nomination boosted Petey's popularity, leading to new opportunities outside of music. One such opportunity came with a role in the 2002 film, Drumline, cementing Petty Pablo's presence not only as a musician but as a multi-talented artist whose influence is growing every day. In the entertainment industry, through determination, creativity and commitment to his roots, Petty Pablo's rise from discovery to Grammy recognition in movie stardom is a story filled with perseverance and inspirational success. In the early 2000s, the hip-hop industry witnessed the rise of a promising artist named Petty Pablo. While diligently working on his second studio album, the release encountered unexpected delays. In a surprising turn of events, Petty decided to quench his fans' thirst by releasing his infectious Lil Jon-produced song, Freak a Leak, in 2003. The song quickly climbed to number two on the Billboard charts, solidifying Petey's presence in the... In an interview with MTV, Petty Pablo appeared confident as he revealed that his second album has been completed for months. In the interim, he's kept busy with a variety of projects, including a notable four-song collaboration with none other than the iconic Will Smith. His dynamic approach to music and collaboration demonstrated his versatility as an artist. Finally, in 2004, Petty released his eagerly awaited second album, Still Writing in My Diary, second entry. The album had an impressive debut at number 4 on the chart, selling more than 117,000 copies in its first week. This success marked a milestone in Petey's career as the album finally achieved gold certification. MTV's report emphasized the significance of Petey's victory in the music industry that year. As if that weren't enough, Petty Pablo's influence extends far beyond his solo efforts. He notably appeared on Sierra's hit single, Goodies, which was considered a female response to his previous track, Freak A Leak. The collaboration gave, Goodies, an incredible seven-week reign at number one on the charts. Petty Pablo made a significant impact in 2005 when his music was featured in the blockbuster film, Hustle and Flow. The film stars Terrence Howard, who is so impressed by Petey's talent that he invites him to the launch party. Little did Petey know that a seemingly ordinary act of kindness during the celebration, when he lent Terrence $200,000 after the star lost his wallet, would later become a turning point in their friendship. In 2006, Petey faced a pivotal moment in his life when his mother fell ill. Describing her as his muse, Petey did not hesitate to put his thriving career on hold to be by her side. This marked a period of transition for the rapper as he parted ways with Jive Records, forming his own record label, Carolina Music Group. During this time, he also released several mixtapes, demonstrating his commitment to his craft despite personal challenges. Amid these changes, there were rumors about Petey's relationship with the head of Death Row Records, Suge Knight. This friendship raised concerns within Petey's inner circle, including influential figures such as Timbaland. The rap mogul questioned the wisdom of such a career move considering Petey's established status. While Petey clarified in an interview with Vlad TV that he was never signed to death row, he acknowledged a genuine friendship with Shug. However, their connection eventually weakened due to their different paths and priorities. Petey Pablo embarked on Timbaland's Shock Value Two Inches tour and was fervently working on his third studio album when an unexpected turn of events shook the foundation of his life. In 2009 and again in 2010, he found himself grappling with the harsh reality of financial struggles, leading him to file for bankruptcy. Unfortunately, both attempts were dismissed due to Petty Pablo's failure to adhere to the agreed-upon repayment plans with his creditors, leaving him in a precarious situation. However, the most pivotal moment in Petty Pablo's life occurred on September 11, 2010. On his way to the MTV Video Music Awards in Los Angeles, he was apprehended at Raleigh-Durham International Airport for possessing a weapon in his carry-on luggage. The weapon, stolen during a 2005 home burglary, exacerbated his legal woes, especially considering his prior felony status. A guilty plea resulted in a 35-month prison sentence, 
commencing on January 4, 2012, at a facility in West Virginia. Even behind bars, Petty Pablo remained resilient, channeling his passion for music into the release of two mixtapes. His determination to stay connected with his craft paid off when he finally regained his freedom after two years. Ready for a triumphant return, Petty Pablo, with the unwavering support of Timbaland, faced another emotional hurdle a month after his release, losing his beloved mother. In collaboration with Timbaland, he channeled his grief into the poignant song, Never Imagined, as a tribute to her. As Petty Pablo aimed to kickstart his career anew, an unexpected twist came in the form of a phone call from Terrence Howard. A decade prior, Petty had given Terrence $200,000, a gesture that proved to be a pivotal turning point. Terrence, now a star on the hit show Empire, requested Petty to write four songs for the series and make a guest appearance. What started as a simple act of kindness transformed into a golden opportunity, helping Petty Pablo earn a total of $15,000 for his involvement in Empire. By 2016, he was in financial crisis when he filed for bankruptcy for the third time. Jasmine Brand, through investigative efforts, discovered that he owed creditors a significant amount of money, more than $200,000. Despite having a monthly income of $7,800, Petty expressed his inability to repay his debt. However, amid financial hardship, a ray of positivity appeared for Petty in 2016. He was given the opportunity once again to represent his state through the song, Carolina Colors, which Sing became the official song of the Carolina Panthers. This recognition not only lifted his spirits but also allowed him to maintain a connection to his roots. The ups and downs of Petey's journey continue when rapper Sawidi decides to sample his 2004 hit, Freak Aleek, for her chart-topping song, My Type. This unexpected collaboration brought Petty back into the spotlight, introducing his music to a new generation of listeners who may not have been familiar with his previous work. The widespread success of My Type brought Petty Pablo back into the mainstream, demonstrating the enduring appeal of his music. The pinnacle of this resurgence came when Petty Pablo shared the stage with Sawidi at the 2019 Bet Hip Hop Awards, where they performed their collaborative hit. This live performance not only solidified Petey's return, but also demonstrated his lasting influence on hip hop. Fast forward to 2020 which marks a major milestone for talented artist Petty. That year saw him graciously receive an ASCAP award for the song, My Type. In his acceptance speech, Petty emphasized the essence of creating music that lasts, saying, it's all about creating great music that lasts a lifetime and creating a masterpiece as well as create a new masterpiece. Beyond the glitz and glamour of the music world, Petey's personal journey also took a notable turn. Having lost an impressive 40 pounds, he now exudes new vitality. While he's yet to walk down the aisle or embrace parenthood, Petty seems to have found joy in his romantic relationship with Angela Taylor, a skilled hairstylist. In addition to his musical pursuits, Petty also channeled his creativity into woodworking, honing his skills in this timeless craft. Fans can look forward to the arrival of Petey's third studio album, a project that certainly reflects his commitment to musical excellence. However, Petty is not limited to just music he ventured into entrepreneurship by launching his own film and music production company, appropriately named Silverback Life. In an interview with Ice Cream Combos, Petty shared the company's mission, to empower young individuals of all nationalities, encouraging them to express their strengths and unleash their inner gorilla. One aspect of Petty Pablo's success is evident in his choice of residence, a lavish mansion located in the heart of New York City. This symbol of prosperity stands as a testament to his accomplishments in the music industry. However, the rapper's financial trajectory took a turn for the worse, revealing the harsh reality of fame's fleeting nature. At the peak of his career, Petty Pablo could be seen cruising in a collection of cars, which once included various models from Toyota and Ford. These vehicles, reflecting his success and affluence, were a source of pride for the artist. Unfortunately, Legal entanglements and financial woes forced Petty Pablo to part ways with the majority of his prized car collection. According to the latest report as of early 2024, Petty Pablo, a prominent figure in the music industry, but has an estimated net worth of around $50,000. Although legal challenges and jail time left their mark on his financial situation, his career resilience and constant support from his fans have helped him maintain his streak commendable net worth.
The rapper's life serves as a cautionary tale about the challenges that accompany fame, emphasizing the importance of financial management and legal responsibility. Petty Pablo's experiences highlight the transient nature of success and the need for artists to navigate the complexities of the entertainment industry wisely. Thank you for watching the entire video. Please leave your comments in the section below. We hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.